In this chapter, I will create the model of our Viking sword using a variety of techniques and taking advantage of 3ds Max's ultra-powerful modifier stack. The amazing symmetry modifier will be introduced, as well as how to seamlessly weld two meshes together. Additionally, we will explore some compositional layout with our shield, axe, and sword that will help drive our final concept. Hello everyone. Uh, before we get started, the usual promotional material here. If you'd like to buy the course, it is available on Gumroad. and You can just click the yellow Gumroad button that pops up on the screen. And it's also available on Steam if you'd like to purchase it from there. And if you need to be able to find the links to that within the YouTube chapter, just come in here um, where the actual video is, click on Show More, and you can see the different links to Gumroad and Steam here. Um, that's about it. Let's get going. Now we're going to start working on the sword. And you'll notice over here I've already made a new layer called sword. And I just have these objects here so I have something for reference. I'm going to go ahead and unhide my images layer. And I'm going to select my sword plane that I have here. Right click, hide unselected. And what I've done already is I've set this up so that I've taken the sword and the one that I want to cut out, the basic design, and I've just placed it right here at the center of world space. Um, so that I can create this with a nice symmetry modifier and then also have that symmetry stay active later when we're in ZBrush. So yeah, let's go ahead and just start working on that. I can hide my shield and axe layers now. I just want to show you how I kind of move those in here. And later I may need to change the scale of the sword if it's not feeling right, but I'll do that as I get to it. Um, so for me, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my grid and I'm going to make a box and just uh, snap it to the world center grid point here. And turn that off. And I know that this is too big, but that's okay. I'm going to take this and scale it down. and just kind of match this up as I go along. I'm going to take this and delete the bottom polys off this and then I'm just going to throw a quick turbo smooth on this to see what happens. So one thing I like about working with boxes is you get nice topology like this at the top opposed to when you're working with like a sphere, you get a bunch of points all coming at once. So when you subdivide and sculpt that in ZBrush, it can get a little bit heavy if you're not using DynaMesh. So that's why I want to show you this work well. And let's go ahead and just play with this a bit. I'm going to go down to the Edit Poly layer and turn this on to show the end result. And also one thing I like to do on the Turbo Smooth is turn on Isolane Display. So now, I can come in here and start scaling some of the things for the base. Even up here, I know that the hill needs to get a little bit uh, smaller. I think that feels about right. Let's make this a little bit wider down here. already we have something that works pretty well. Let me go ahead and give this one more subdivision here. Let's look at the turbo smooth, turn this up to two just to kind of see what's happening. Maybe turn this into a see-through mode. And play around with the proportions just a bit more. And I know I'm going to do most of my work in um, ZBrush, but this kind of gives me a good base to start with. Side view here feels a little bit funny. I, you know, we want to keep that nice and smooth through here, the transition. Maybe I'll bring this down a bit. Go back to my front view. And I think we're almost in the 
good shape here. That looks pretty good to me. Um, the center is going to end up being a different leather bit, so I'm actually not even going to create the metal piece that goes within here. Normally, as you can see, the actual swords, they have like this little part that would connect through the hilt where the iron or steel connects to the other pieces. For me, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I'm going to grab the bottom of this and cap it. And when I do cap that, you'll notice that we start to get the uh, smoothing out around the edges. So now let's take those edges. Just give them a quick chamfer and this is something that we can deal with later when we get into ZBrush I just want to currently like this is a representation of I think what's going to happen whenever I start subdividing in ZBrush and uh, this will keep the edges tight around the bottom just by adding that quick chamfer so now let's go ahead and turn off the see-through mode go back to fully opaque you know, maybe I'll give this a, a gray color. And I'm actually going to copy this and move it down. And I'm copying this down because I just want to use the same mesh over again since I've already got it. Uh, meaning, if I make another box, it's not going to match up perfectly right now. The width and everything's going to be the same as this blade. So that's why I'm opting to do this and just delete out faces that I don't want. And I also want to cap this, so I'm selecting all my border areas here and then just capping. The next thing I want to do actually is connect those in the middle in my edge mode. Switch back to poly and delete half of this. Then I want to activate the symmetry modifier, and I'm going to flip this on the X. Let's go down and turn on the show end result, and then now we can see that this is working in symmetry. This will just make it easier for some of the stuff I'm doing down here. Another thing that I think I'm going to need to is a turbo smooth on this. So again, I'm just kind of having it so that the final end stack will show the result, and I've. Uh, Got to smooth that looking nice. Um, I know I'm probably going to use the same mesh for the blade too, so I'm just going to preemptively copy this down here. And I'm going to hide this for now while I work on this piece. So first thing I want to do is get some uh, vertices in here, vertices that are going to match up with this piece a little bit better. And go through and Shrink this down a little bit around the side here. Not too much though. I'm going to connect this edge as well. And notice we have kind of like a, a little curve going on the top of this blade, especially around the top. And one thing I think we're going to really need to do just to fully see this is again chamfer my edges around here so that when it smooths it retains some of the sharpness that's going on in here. So I'm going to do that in just a minute. See how that changed, how that reacted right here. When I moved the turbo smooth up, it got rid of that little pinch in the center. That's just because the symmetry actually welds in the center, and before that it didn't think it was welding, so we got kind of that interesting pinch. Okay, so this looks about the right proportions, but obviously too soft. We can't have something this mushy. So I'm going to delete my two modifiers that we have here. And 
I'm going to show you two examples of something that happens with the chamfer. I'm going to duplicate this down. I could copy that. And then this one, I'm going to reset our X form on. So let's reset that. Right click, collapse to. So now we have two of these. And um, what I want to show you here is what happens if you don't reset your X forms before you start chamfering edges on something. So here, this is one that we've reset an X form. I'm gonna chain for that. If you look around the sides here, feel like everything feels really even and like you would expect. Now let's go to this one where we didn't reset our X form. And chain for that. Now you're gonna get uh, an undesirable result. See how this one goes much more like a 45 degree angle like you would expect between two 90 degree surfaces if you chamfered something. This one, because we didn't reset the X form, uh, it still thinks that it's a slightly different shape and uh, bounding box size. And because of that, it doesn't divide as nicely as we like. Because if we do this, then the sharpness it won't work quite as nice as we're wanting it to be on the subdivision. If you're a hard surface modeler, that's something that you're going to want to do a lot, is constantly reset that X form. And again, that's under the help work tool here. Reset that, and then collapse it, and then uh, things will subdivide nicely like this. I'm going to undo these, delete this, and let's go ahead and do this for real this time. But before I do it, I'm going to go ahead and add our symmetry modifier again, flip that, Add a turbo smooth on top with two iterations. Turn my isolin display because I don't want to see all those subdivisions come down here. Show end result. And I'm going to select all the edges that I do want to chamfer, which look like they're already selected. So with this, um, before I start on this, I can kind of tell that uh, you know the edges of this sword, this part are kind of soft so I don't need to get a super tight chamfer on there. So let's go ahead and turn this to see-through. So as I'm chamfering this again, anytime I'm doing this stuff, I'm doing it with the expectation of what I want it to do whenever I get into ZBrush. So chamfer, now if we do this, it's gonna be, I think maybe a little too tight. So I'll probably go even a little softer than that. And then we can tighten up later in ZBrush if we want. Actually, maybe I will keep it tight. And then we can soften up. It's easier, I think, to soften it is to tighten the edges. So we'll keep it kind of like that. I think um, we need to add maybe a, another division of topology right here just to smooth things out where we get the nice little rounded part. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do that by selecting these and then connecting in the center. And moving these polys this way. And now we have more of that nice curve going on that you see in the actual sword. Let's just check our top view, make sure that we're not getting out of alignment with top and bottom here. I think that'll be acceptable. Yeah, that still looks pretty good. So you see that uh, we got kind of a nice taper coming this way and then um, coming in here as well. And then the nice smooth cut. Uh, next, I'm gonna make the leather handle. Uh, this I've sped up because I'm just using the exact same techniques that I showed you a second ago. Using the symmetry mode in order to get a nice look on the leather. The only thing that I might change a little bit later is in Mark's concepts. Um, I might make it look more like this plate handle has leather wrapping instead of just a really nice singular other piece wrapped around it. But um, for now, I'll just set it up this way as we see in the replica sculpt here. Uh, the next thing that I do sometimes is I'm going to show you, I'm going to add some even subdivision across the surface with the connect mode. And I try to get this squared off as much as possible, meaning creating square quad geometry. And I do this with assets that I think I'm going to sculpt in ZBrush 
that don't need to be dynameshed or remeshed in ZBrush, meaning if the object is locked down pretty well, I'll just work on the topology here. I'll probably even do the UVs here so that I can uh, keep them as clean as possible and directional. And then um, afterwards within ZBrush, I can just keep those UVs. And once I export a decimated object, I can re-relax. Just a technique I like to use, and we actually use in production quite a bit. And then now what I'm going to do is start creating the blade of the sword. No big secrets here for the initial part. I unhit the object that we hit earlier. And again, this is just a duplicate of all the same models we've been using for each part of the sword. And I'm just doing some basic shaping right now of how I want the sword to go down and taper. So toward the edge blade, it gets a little bit sharper. And then as it gets closer to the bottom, I want it to come to more of a point. And I'll start extruding some of those bases down. And I do that by deleting those polygons off the bottom first, and then just shift drag them out while in edge mode. And then now just kind of trying to match up the shape at the end of the sword where you have that um, extrusion in. So with this, I'm going to be using two symmetry modifiers in my stack. And this way we can work on just a quarter of the sword but be able to see the entire result of the whole blade. Um, these symmetry modifiers are really awesome. You can do so much with them in 3D Studio Max. This is one of the big reasons I like to use this program. And after that, once I'm in symmetry mode and things are live, I'll go through and start making some additional modifications on edges and points moving the shapes around until I get something that feels right. Even here, you can see me playing with some of the symmetry modifier. The next thing I'm gonna do is insert a swift loop edge along the in, inner part of this blade where it needs to extrude down. So again, that's one of the modeling tools. And then swift loop, just activate that. And that green line is gonna make your line of geo. Place that in here because I want to have a little edge where the extrusion part of the blade is going to go down. Um, there'll be some interesting topology every now and then whenever you're working in symmetry mode. That usually just means maybe something's not aligned flatly where the symmetry is and all is. So if you see that, just kind of play around with it and troubleshoot it. Next thing I'm going to do is extrude in the interior portion of the polygon just to make that extrusion a little bit more noticeable where the divot is. And I'm just doing that with the extrude polygon tool and lining that up. Converting my selection to vertex with that right click convert to vertex or face, whatever selection you want to use. And I'll just move some of these interior pieces a bit so that it has a nice fall off from the sharp edge that's on the top of the sword first. Top of that little ridge line. And now I'm going to invert my polygon selection and then that additional line of poly is right in there. And then I'll delete those out because I don't want those in there. Otherwise I would create a line in the center. Now I'll keep moving points around to get the parts of the sword running as smoothly as possible, refining those shapes until they're doing exactly what I want. But at the bottom, um, whenever you're ready actually, you know, you can collapse this down. So I'm going to collapse this all into one mesh and now it's solid, it's not the symmetry modifiers anymore. And the reason I'm doing this is because the middle part of the blade, I'm going to need to take that line and chamfer it. So I get rid of any polys that don't allow me to edge loop select it. And now that I have that, I can come in and chamfer it. Because if you put a turbo smooth on this, you'll see that the end of the blade gets very soft like this. So chamfer and now we have the sharper point to the sword. And I'll play with that a bit. You know, I may not want it to be super, super 
tell you if I'm going to use the same topology straight up in uh, ZBrush. And after that, all I do is I just kind of go through and, as I've been doing with other parts, refine the shapes until I get the exact look that I want for the sword. Another part is I'm going here along the edge, the cutting edge of the sword, and I'm doing a ring selection, and then I'm going to do a connect and make one more line of polygons in here. And I want to do this because right now the edge of the sword feels a little bit blunt to me, and this will allow me to give it a, a sharp, dangerous looking cutting edge. So I'll take that and then I'll right click and convert to vertex. And then now I can go to a front view mode and do some uh, non-uniform scaling to make the cutting part of the blade look really nice and sharp. You just have to be careful not to pull it out too far. And the final thing I'll do is sometimes I notice I got a five-sided polygon like you see right here. And if I see that, I'll go through and just manually collapse those points because I don't want any five-sided faces on here. And since we're talking about topology, I want to show you a pretty cool tool from the graphite modeling tools for selecting how many faces you have on the polygon. Uh, I'm going to turn off this turbo smooth. I'm going to go into my edit poly selection mode here. And up here in the graphite modeling tools, um, if you look over here on the far right, sides, number of polygon size in which to base the selection, this is great. You can uh, use this to see if you have any five-sided faces on your piece. So if you do this and then you hit this select button, if I did have any five-sided faces, it would highlight them. So for example, if I show four-sided faces and select, you can see here that it shows me all the four-sided faces that I have. So I usually do this in order to get the cleanest topology on a mesh. I don't like to send five-sided faces into ZBrush if I'm going to sculpt without DynaMeshing. So definitely check out that tool if you haven't used it. So now what I want to do is actually weld the blade into the sword hilt. If we look at the reference image below here, you'll notice that these are actually connected together. I'm imagining they probably just soldered those together and they were different pieces of metal back in the Viking era. But uh, for the purposes of the sculpt, um, I want this to be a clean connection. Again, I'm not going to just do what I could simply do with DynaMesh and ZBrush because I'm going to set this thing up for subdivision and actually give it EVs and nice topology before I even send it over so I have a lot of control over it. So the best thing for me to do is not really affect the sword blade because I want to keep that precise. So again, I'm going to grab this piece and turn this into a symmetry mode style type work. And at that point, I can start kind of cutting into everything. And the main goal of this is to one, create evenly distributed topology, and also to make sure that I have the same amount of topology connecting with between the blade and my sword hilt. So you can see me kind of moving things around to make polygons distributed a little nicer. And then also down here, I need to actually make sure that I have three little polygon connections that'll go through to meet the three edges that are down below. So I'll chain for this once move these out a little bit and in a few minutes here or in a second I'll do a ring selection use a connect tool to add another line in between that so I can make sure that sword blade 3 edge connects with the top hilt 3 edge. And now what I'm doing is I'm actually going to start cutting in where I want the sword blade to meet the hilt. And I don't want it to come out super far, I want it to feel tight. That's why I'm cutting this in around the same shape as the sword. And then I do an even closer cut in. I'll be right by the blade. And this is where I'm going to eventually weld these together. So in here, 
before I start welding everything together, I'll just try and get my topology set up as clean as possible so that when I'm working, I won't have to make too many adjustments because once I will collapse a symmetry modifier that I'm going to be using a little bit later, I don't want to have to go back and continuously make changes on all sides of the mesh that I could have done if I would have been smartly using it in the symmetry mode. All I'm doing here is just setting things up for even polygon distribution. Now adding, you know, checking some things with the symmetry, moving that around, adding a couple more adjustments with my topology to even out the distribution. Now what I end up doing is attaching these together so now they're one and the same object. And I want to start using the target weld feature to move the sword hilt to the sword blade. You want to make sure you're not target welding from the blade to the hilt because that could cause imperfections on the sword blade. So I'm just using the hilt and target weld. So next what I'm going to check is just throw a turbo smooth on this and you can see the edges don't work properly with the blade where I'm at the hilt. So that's because there's not enough supporting edges around that edge. So what I'm going to do is end up connecting some of the vertices that you see here to get more of a quad style topology around where the blade meets the hilt. while I'm doing it, I'm also adding some additional lines of geo onto my sword hilt for some evenly distributed polygons. And I'm happy with that. I'll end up using the cut tool here so I can get that additional topology in here that'll make this feel a little nicer. And that group of three vertices there, I'll collapse those into one. And then I'm going to select these edges up here and then control backspace and delete those out of there. And pretty much just have to do the same thing for the other side. And I do see some kind of interesting creases there on the bottom that I'll go through and fix a little bit later by hand. So this is just me speeding through the process on the other side. and then heating up some of that weird pinching we saw on the bottom. And from this point on, um, what I want to do is make the polygon distribution a little bit more even on my sword, so I'm just adding more spans across everything. And I'm doing this because when I subdivide all this in ZBrush, it'll give me a, a good amount of topology to work with as I'm subdividing to make sure that I get lots of density all over the place and not just in some of the sharper areas. And the sword is going to be a little bit different than some of the other assets I'm creating for the scene. Because a sword, I want to be doing symmetry sculpting, and then also I want to have all my UVs done for my sword to start with, and place some interesting designs on UVs that I'll use as alpha maps within ZBrush. And that's why I'm taking the extra time and effort to do this right now. And here at the end, just kind of get my organization set up, maybe my sword, that kind of thing. And resetting next form. Alright, now that the sword's done, I want to take a look at what it is going to be like whenever it's behind my shield and everything else. So, what I'm going to do is set up some links here. Let's uh, have everything link to the hilt actually. So if you select these and you do this select and link tool right here. Now if I rotate my sword hilt here, 
we're in good shape. Now since this is in the center of world space, as you remember, and I want to retain all that information later when I'm in uh, ZBrush, I'm just going to keep that here as is, and I'm going to make this layer sword and call it sword um, original. And what I'm going to do now is make an instance of this and make a new layer. I'm going to call this sword placed. and hide the other stuff in our scene. Am I saying hide all? Yes. And I'm going to hide these image planes for the moment. I'm going to hide the uh, original sword. Turn off this grid. Come in here and start placing my sword. I think one thing that might be kind of cool to do is keep these similar angles. So I'm just going to do this and then scale this down. Feels like maybe it's going to be a little bit too big. This is where the composition starts to feel a little bit funny, like I'll have to play around with the axe and the sword a bit. So the axe here, I'm going to do the same kind of linking thing. to this and adjust that a little bit. So that we can have something that feels kind of nicely balanced with the sword hilt. feeling almost right. Waiting still a little bit off. It's kind of a fine balance here. Already that feels Good to me. And we'll make sure that nothing's interpenetrating back here. Feels a little bit heavy on this side with the axe, but that's okay. I mean, the other thing we could do is try rotating this 180 degrees and do this. And that actually.
actually feels pretty cool. I don't know about what you guys think. I, I think that feels a little bit better. I just need to play around with the balance just a bit more. I think I'm going to just scale this up a, a tiny bit more. got herself a pretty good balance here for our shield and swords. I notice that I've left some stuff back here. Object primitives as uh, properties incorrectly. Okay, cool. So next, uh, let's go ahead and play with the helmet a little bit. Thanks everyone for watching part three. I hope you join me again next week for part four, where we will look at the final concept in Photoshop and discuss how I used a combination of 3D modeling with photo bashing from reference images to come up with a cool design.